All right, so that's the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John is often also referred to as the Gospel of Love. And I guess because he's of all, John, the author, is also referred to as the, the, the disciple that Jesus loved. Doesn't mean that Jesus didn't love the others, but he must have had a little extra for John like, like we all do. So the main purpose of this book, this gospel, if, if he gave it, he gives it to us at the almost to the end, what his purpose was for writing. And remember, there are two Johns mentioned here. John, also known as John the Baptist, and John the Apostle. The author is not John the Baptist. The author is John the Apostle, just to clarify that. So Donna, would you read John 20, 31 for us, please? Okay, John 20. Mm -hmm. I'm reading from the book of John, chapter 20, verse 31. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. So, so that one verse kind of tells it all, doesn't it? That the whole Bible, every word in the Bible is written. Why? It's not a novel. You know, it's written so that we will believe. You know, and we've got to always remember the Holy Bible is the inspired, inerrant word of the Lord Jesus. He is the one who put it in these men's heart to write, and women to write this book, the entire Bible. The entire Bible, Old and New Testament, there are some religions who do not accept the Old Testament and do not believe that the Old Testament is God's word, but it's just an account of the Jews and the Israelites. But you see there's a lot of confirmation. And Jesus himself and Peter and all, they were all referred to the Old Testament. And the Old Testament kind of prophesied in detail what's going to happen in the New Testament. So the entire Bible. And so some of the key thoughts we're going to focus on is faith, faith and eternal life. Faith and eternal life. We're also going to see some characteristics of Jesus so we can get to know him even better. Chapter one is kind of subtitled, The Divinity of Christ. He alone is divine. He alone is God. No other God but him. So, Reverend Joseph, would you read um, verse 1 for us? John 1, 1. So, sorry, John 8, 58. Yes, sir. Very truly I tell you, Jesus answered, Before Abraham was born, I am. So, the first, it said the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And the word here referring to who? Who is Jesus. the word referring to? Jesus. Jesus. Representing the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And then he said he became. That means it was an existing before. And he said he was there before. Before Abraham, I am. Present tense. You know, remember what did when Moses... So spoke to the Lord at the burning bush, and, and when Moses asked him, asked the, who should I say send me? What was the reply? I am that I am. I am that I am. The Lord is present. He's past, present, and future, ever continuously existing all the time. The word, the the I tell you, the word people that the spoken, the power of the spoken word. Why do we, we read, we study books to get knowledge? You know, we all go to school and we were told to study the word. It's a, a written word. Now we have digital word, but it's still the word. We speak the word, we speak word that would either uplift somebody or put them down. 
That's why we got to be very careful as Christians and believers that our words are uplifting and encouraging and comforting and not discouraging. I mean, sometimes we, you know, in the moment, but we have a, always have an opportunity. Oh, I'm sorry. I really didn't mean it that way. But the word, the power of the word, the written word, even that now we have text word, is so powerful. But the word in the Bible is even more powerful than what we say and the word that we say. That's why it's so important. I, I don't tell people read the Bible. I tell people feed on the word as you found in the, in the, I found in the Bible. Think about it. The, this body, we need, it need nourishment, right? I mean, I can skip a meal or maybe two, but I need to eat physical food to nourish the body. But guess what? We learned when we study Revelation that dust to dust, ashes to ashes, this body will die. This body will die. That's the first death. And we learn in Revelation 2.11 about the second death. He that overcome it will be saved from the second death. And the second death is those who do not overcome, those who do not accept Jesus will be sent to hell for eternity. Those who overcome, accept Jesus and Lord and Savior will rise up like Jesus rose up and be in heaven for eternity, saved from the second death. The second death is separation from Jesus Christ, from our Lord. We don't want, but we have a choice to make. Father, give me strength to overcome. We just said the Lord's Prayer, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Whatever we ask for, he will give it to us. So the word, Feed on the word as often as you can. We all made a commitment. Well, except Cherise, she joined us today. Now we're going to read the Bible, but it's not too late. We're going to read the Bible, the whole Bible this year. How are you doing? Have you started? Everybody looking at me. Everybody <laughs> answering. Have you started reading the Bible? We all made a commitment. Yeah. Okay. It's, not, it's not too late. You can catch up. So I have Do so you have a plan or are you just reading the Bible? I, I just read as I have the time to read and I make time to I turn off the TV because that thing can be a distraction. Turn off the TV and open my Bible and read until I'm tired, until my eyes start getting weak. And so I'm, I'm in almost like chapter 21 of Genesis. So um, I see what you're going to learn. I sent you all, a, and I'll send it to Cherise. I send you a breakdown of all the books in the Bible and how many chapters in each book. So you can have an idea. You know, the, like the book of Psalms will have the most chapters, but, but many of them are just three or four verses or five or six. So, but I encourage you. Don't give up. Don't say, well, I didn't start this year, so I'll do it next year. Next year is not guaranteed. It's not too late. You can start tonight or first thing in the morning. Make time and do it. The word, feed on the word. And we hear about the word again is mentioned in Sharon, Revelation 19, verse 13, please. Revelation 19, 13, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. I love how our, our Bible confirms and does not contradict itself. In John, we hear the Word became flesh. In Revelation at the end, we see his name was the Word. The word of God. He is the word. Any doubt? Any reason to doubt that no. he is the word? No. Unless you're doubting Thomas. He is the word. So verse 2 in, jo in John confirms that he was with God in the beginning. So verse 1 and 2 kind of introduces us to our God who is ever present. 
He was and is and is to come. We have heard about the Alpha and the Omega, ever present. Unlike other gods, where they have to go somewhere, followers to see the statue of their god, make a pilgrimage to a certain country or whatever to see their god. We don't. Our God is right there, right next to us. My my one of my half sisters who lives in Guyana sent me a text. She said, "You know, I took down all the Christmas decorations, and the house is looking empty now." I said, "Anna, the house is never empty. Jesus is there with you. It's never empty. If you believe in Jesus, He is there with you." And she said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for reminding me. He's always with us. Never, he never leaves us. The word of God. And, and he provides it for us. He provides the word for us. So in verse 3, we see that he's also the creator. Um, Jerry, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 8, 6, please. Yep. It's first or second Corinthians? First. First. Do I need to get your hearing aid or something? No. Okay. <laughs> I, I think you'll first oh. let second Corinthians. First Corinthians, verse 8, chapter 8, verse 6, please. Verse 15. Verse 6. Look, watch me. 6. Okay. Yet there is, yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from who, whom all things came, and for whom we live. But there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came, and through, who, through whom we live. Amen. Again, we see how the word confirms the word. In verse 3 in John, it says, All things were made by him, and without him was not anything that was made. All things were made by him. He said the word. Go back to Genesis 1 and read about the, cre the creation. He said, all things were made by him. Even the things that men are making today, who inspires them? Who provides the basic material for them to make it? God. All things. Without him, nothing is made. Nothing. He is the Almighty. Um, Lincoln? Yes? There are a couple of things in these three verses. One is the concept of the incarnation. That God becoming flesh. And we use the word incarnation. In verse 3, there, what you said is direct evidence of the Trinity that Jesus was with God at the beginning and helping him create everything. That's why he told his disciples before Abraham, finish that for me. Before Abraham, we just said it. I am. I am. Before Abraham, he was ever existent. That's what we've been trying to say, ever existent. He didn't come into the world, you know. The world was created by him. And we always got to remember, although the world became flesh, the world did not come out of him. He was man, but he was God too. And he can do that. Only God can do that. The Holy Spirit was in him. That's why he could have done do all those miracles that no other man has ever done. And because some people would say, well, he became flesh and they leave it there. No, no, no. He was God and man. He was God and man, the creator. So he, pre he provides, in verse 4, it tells us he provides eternal, eternal life. That is save, being saved from the second death. Sharish, would you read Romans 5.21 for us? Romans. You can give me that one. I'll have to look that up. Romans 5, verse 21. Okay. Romans 5, 21. Hold on. 
get in there. Romans 5, 21. Mm -hmm. So that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace must might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And, you know, we can only get eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. No other way. He said, I am the, the way, you know, verse 4, you know, it, and let me read it again for us. You know, in him was life, life. And the life was the light of men. The life was the light of men. You know, he is a radiant light. That's what we get in real, a light that no, no human light can compare with. You know, the, all this light in our house, we need a switch to turn it on. No, his light is always on. And, and you know what? Like right now, if the power, God, don't let it happen. But if the power goes off, I don't have any light. But I have Jesus. His power never goes off. We got to remember that. It's a, and then he gives us, oh my God, when the Lord bless us, he bless us abundantly. Life, abundant life. Abundant life. Uh, Sharice, John 10, 10 for us, please. John 10, 10. Uh, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Thank you, Jesus. Not just ordinary, but life to the full. full. He gives us life to live to the full. Live it to the full. And then he brings life for the dead. Donna, John 11, 25, please. Uh, 11, 25. The reading from... The book of John chapter 11 verse 25 and Jesus said unto her I am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live though he was dead yet shall he live and some of time we get dead to sin but we confess our sins and repent we shall rise again. We have that opportunity. And you know, he, he raised Lazarus from the dead. He raised Jairus' daughter from the, from the dead. And other raised her from the dead. He can do anything. And then he is the truth. Um, Reverend Joseph, John 14, yes, verse, John 14, verse 6, please. Yes, yes, sir. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth of the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. No one comes to the Father. He's the only, there's only one way. Simple. That's the other, some of the other, another reason why a lot of non-believers, non-Christians have a hard time. How can it be so easy? How can it be so simple? God did not come to confuse us or to harm us or to hurt us, but to give us a a way, a straight and narrow way to him and to heaven. And then, you know, he himself is the light. He himself is the light. Sharon, Isaiah 9-2. Isaiah 9-2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. Even them. Everybody, the, the sun shines on the believers and non-believers, right? Yeah. And then the moon, the rain, and all the blessings. Have you ever walked in a dark room? Yes. Without light, how does that feel? It feels like you're blind. <laughs> it feels <laughs> like you're blind. I remember when I was still working, I, I came home very early in the morning. I, I I, I came back from California, Sharice. I had I did a red eye and I didn't want to wake up my wife. So I creep into the bedroom, put my carry-on on the floor, went into the bathroom to do my bathroom duties, coming back to the bed, forgot 
that the carry-on was on the floor. I tripped and fell. People, my head hit the sideboard of the bed. My hand, I, you know, instinctively, I put my hand out. I these two hands went limp. I could. I thought they were both broken. I couldn't get up, and she couldn't lift me up. They had to call nine one one. Ugh. And and they came, and but by the time they came, the blood started recirculating, and they wanted to know if I wanted to go to the hospital. I said, well, nothing is broken or anything. I'm good. But I, since then, I leave the suitcase out in the living room. But to walk in darkness is not a pleasant thing. That's why the Lord provides light for us and, and, and the light to show us the way to him. Mm -hmm. to show, the light to show us, that light to show us the way and his word is, part, is a representation of that light. So, Jerry, would you read 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6 now? On mute, Jerry, on mute. You said verse 6, right? Yes. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. The light of the knowledge. You know, you've heard a statement like you, you hear something and like light bulb go up in your head. Something that you didn't know about before. And then you hear, oh, that's what they're talking about. That, the kind of light of, of knowledge. Uh, Sheree's Revelation 21, 23. Uh, Revelation 21, 23. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it. For the glory of God gives it light and the lamb is its lamp. That's what we have to look for. You know, when we go to heaven, you're not going to see no lamp hole, you know. You're not going to see no wires or no transformers or no wind, you know, windmills to provide power, nuclear power plants. Jesus himself is the light. I can't wait. Just imagine what that would be like. The lamb himself is the lamp. The light comes from him. Oh my goodness. So, we talk about walking. Anybody have any walking in darkness stories? <laughs> you people are so, you're much smarter I, I, than me. I went to a week in Barataria and uh, walking with one or two friends along the sidewalk to go to my car. <laughs> There was an open manhole. Ouch. Wasa. And I fell about oh my God. <laughs> five or six feet. <laughs> yes. Oh wow. Luckily yep. there left mud in there. So I had a soft landing. When we walk in darkness. God was with you. When we walk in darkness, we stumble and fall and we hurt ourselves. When we don't adhere to the light of the Lord. We will walk a straight path and we will not hurt ourselves. B I B L E Sharon. Basic instructions before leaving Earth. Follow the instructions and the guidelines and the counsel of the word so we wouldn't fall and we wouldn't stumble. So in verse 5, it said, The darkness has not understood. Because they, why would they not understand? Because they were not expecting a humble man walking on the, on the land. They, they were looking for a warrior on a horse to rescue them from the Romans. That is what the, that worldly expectations. So that's why they didn't understand until later on. After the resurrection, some of them finally get it. Some of them still haven't gotten it yet. Some there, you know, there are some Jews who are still waiting for their Messiah. But fortunately, there is an organization called Jews for Jesus, who have acknowledged, accepted that He is the Messiah. 
But there are some people who are still waiting. Who are still waiting. God bless them. God mm -hmm. bless them. So John 6, verses 6 to 34, 6 the, from 6 to 34 tells us about the ministry of John the Baptist. And you remember, G John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin, the son of Elizabeth, Mary's cousin. So he, um, Donna, would you read Luke 1, 11 to 17 for us, please? Do Donna Maria. Unmute, Donna, unmute. Did she leave? Donna Maria, are you there? It looked like she stepped away. All right, who has Luke chapter 1, verse 11 to 17? Right here, okay. Oh, so you're I back. Have I, I, mm -hmm. I didn't step away, I'm right here. So it's Luke 1, 11 to 17. I had, I just um had moved to read something and I couldn't find you, but I'm reading from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 11 to 17. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John, and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine, nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God, and, the, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. That's the introduction. You know, Zachariah was a prophet and his wife, Elizabeth, but they were very, in the 80s, 90 beyond childbearing age. So the angel appeared to Zachariah in the Holy of Holies and told him that he's going to have a son and he didn't believe. And if you read further, when you have time, because he did not believe, he was struck dumb until the baby came. And when he came out of the Holy of Holies, he was staying there, when he came out, the people were wondering, what, why is he taking so long? And he came out and he had to make signs to them. Uh, so they knew something happened there. He had a vision. And Elizabeth had a similar vision. And she conceived and had John in her womb. But John, while he was still in the womb of his mother, Elizabeth, recognized the presence of Jesus while Jesus was still in Mary's womb. Isn't that amazing? Um, Reverend Joseph, will you read yes, Luke 141 for us, please? Yes, sir. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby left in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And Elizabeth told Mary, her cousin, you know, the moment you came in and start talking, the baby start kicking and, and leaping in my womb while you were still in the womb. And Elizabeth, that was just confirmation to her that she was having something special. She was six months pre pregnant at that time. And Mary had just conceived by the Holy Spirit. So... In verse 7 to 9, John the Baptist was a witness of the light that was coming into the world, as prophesied by Isaiah. Isaiah said there will be one coming, and we, we, we read about it earlier, crying in the wilderness, a voice crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way, prepare ye the way of the Lord. That was prophesied by Isaiah 700 years ago, before it's happening now. In verse 10 to 11, the world at that time 
did not recognize him because as mentioned before, they were expecting a great warrior to rescue them from the rule of the Romans. Many questioned his claim to be the son of God. They questioned Jesus and they even accused him of blasphemy because he claimed to be the son of God. Sharon, read Mark 6, 4 for us. Mark 6, 4. Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own town, among his relatives, and in his own home. His own people do not accept him as Lord and Savior. It was not until after he died and rose again did James's brother accept and believe and became one of the leaders of the church. His own people. Uh, and we in later on in the in the world we will see he did he did not do any miracles or heal anybody in his hometown Nazareth because his own people did not believe. In verse 14, we see a repetition of verse 1. But this also mentions that he lived for a while among his disciples and the people. He lived for a while. And we know that we indicate that he how many years he lived? 33 years. Zero to 33 years total, and at least three years with his disciples. His active ministry started at age 30 when he recruited all his disciples, and they lived with him for at least three years. So they saw everything that he did firsthand. They witnessed all his miracles and listened to his teachings. How many of you have seen The Chosen? If you have not looked at that series, I would strongly recommend you look look it up on the in your TV and it's called The Chosen. Um, the the I think they they have they bring in a, a new um section coming up soon. But The Chosen it kind of brings God's words to life. It's, it's and it's really true to the word, The Chosen. So John the Baptist clearly, clearly testifies concerning Jesus and acknowledges his greatness above all. And then the, the three other Gospels, all three confirm. Um, Sharish, Matthew 3.11. Matthew 3.11 states, I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandal I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Donald Francis, Mark 1, 2, and 3. Donald Francis and Miss Antigua. <laughs> Mark chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. No, that is me. That is not Donna Francis. That is Donna Maria. Mark one. Oh, two, I'm sorry. Two. That's me. I gotta find another name for one of you. I'm telling <laughs> you. So um, I'm reading from the book of Mark, chapter one, verses two and three. As it is written in the prophets, behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Friends, brothers and sisters, he's coming back. We need to be ready. Every day is to prepare for that second coming. Many people at that time when John was telling them did not believe him. We were surprised. Let us believe and pray and prepare for the second coming. We have the word. Reverend Joseph, we, Reverend, yes, Donna Francis, you saying something? No. Okay. Reverend Joseph, Luke 3 16. Yes, sir. John answered them all, I baptize you with, with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come. The steps of their Sandals, I am not worthy to unite. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And later on, when we study John, we'll see how when the Lord blessed his disciples, how the tongues of fire came upon their head. And then when Peter and Paul 
bless other people, the Gentiles, tongues of fire came and fed up upon their head. So all our blessings come from Jesus. All our blessings, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And remember, I shared with you what does the acronym of grace stand for? Anybody remember? G-R-A-C-E. Write God it down. Riches, God's riches at, at Christ's at expense. Christ's expense. Yeah. God's riches at Christ's expense. In fact, I recommend you get a three by five card and take a Sharpie and have that new because God's riches at Christ's expense. Yep. Then in verse 16, you know, verse 18, we talk about no one has seen the Lord. Sharon, Exodus 33, 20, please. 33, 20. But he said, you cannot see my face for no one may see me and live. No one may, if we see the face of God, we cannot live until we get to heaven. While we're on this earth. And, and write down these verses and you can read them later on. Colossians 1.15. 1 Timothy 1.17. And 1 Timothy 6.16. Can you repeat that for me, please, so I can write it down? Yes, Colossians 1.15. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. 1 Timothy 1.17. And 1 Timothy 6.16. Okay. So now, you know, in verse 19 to 27, John insists that he is not the Christ. He insists that he is not the Christ. And he continues to testify that Christ is coming. He is coming. And some people may say, well, he has to, well, maybe he saw some people who were not there the day before or the week before when he was preaching. He saw some new faces. You know, like, like, you know, when we go to church on Sundays, our pastor, every Sunday will say, my name is Trenton. I'm the senior pastor here. I'm blessed to be the senior pastor here. Because we, he don't know if there are some visitors. So John is telling, saying it again and again, because we don't know if there are some new people who never heard it before. But then we also know, many of us are teachers here, that repetition is one of the most effective form of learning. Repetition. How do we know the Lord's Prayer? We don't even have to open the Bible to say it. We repeated it so many times, it's instinctively become a part of us. Repetition. Repetition. Never stop sharing God's word. So in verse 25, we, we learn that the location where John was baptizing was in Bethany on the other side of the Jordan River. And uh, I've never been, anybody been on a, on a trip to Israel? One of those? Anybody? Not this time. Huh? I said not this time. What do you mean not this time? <laughs> They're fighting among themselves. I was, I was, uh, since about five years ago, I was going to go, but because of all this, Tribulation. I'm. I decided not to go. Oh, so you never been? Nope. Okay. Um. Remember, we had my cousin Sandra. She's been on a trip, and she was sent, sent pictures of get one of the popular things to people is to go and get baptized in the Jordan River, like 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 Jesus. What what, what an honor! So it, it, on the other, many people make trips, and it, it's like an attraction. For, for these um, pilgrimage people, tourists, and to get baptized in the Jordan River. Um, but you don't have to go and get baptized in the Jordan River. If you haven't been baptized, get baptized. It, it's like a blessing and a revelation and a whole new, a new creation. A new creation. You're an adult now, you can choose. When I was a baby, they baptized me as a baby, I had no choice. But as an adult, I got baptized. Sherry's in the Chateauhuchi River. It was such a blessing. It was such a blessing. So think about it. 
think about it it's a great thing to do for yourself and for jesus if baptism was not important you think it would be in the word <laughs> if it was not important it would not be in the word would it no no so if you believe this is the word let's do it let's just get it done in verse 29 john points out that jesus calls him points out jesus there is the lord when he saw him coming and he said the lamb of god the lamb of god jesus is referred to as the lamb of god throughout the holy bible um madri isaiah 53 verse 7 please he was oppressed and he, he was afflicted yet he opened not his mouth he was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shearers is silent so he opened not his mouth <laughs> you know in revelation we studied the book of revelation recently nine verses referred to jesus as the lamb and you can take note revelation 56 revelation 61 revelation 79 revelation 1211 revelation 138 revelation 141 revelation 153 revelation 174 and revelation 21 22 nine verses When you think about a lamb, and Jesus is referred to as the lamb, the more pure lamb, what comes to mind? What kind of characteristic would description come to mind when you think about a lamb compared to other animals? Mm, meek. Meek. Yeah. Peace. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it. Anything else? Innocent, like. Oh. What's that, Sherry? Is it innocent? Innocent. So innocent, they need a shepherd to lead them. Yeah, they need a shepherd to lead them. Have you ever seen a lamb fighting with another lamb? No. <laughs> Or read about it? No. 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 To, to Donald's point, peace, humble. and that's the representation he could have chosen chosen any animal to associate himself with but he chose the lamb of god the lamb of god peace of god and the one who take away because in those yes jerry yeah i sent you a chat i would i would like to leave and see you all the next week no no you cannot leave why not because you're asking to leave i'm telling you no you can't we need you <laughs> but if you have to leave go ahead i'm just kidding with you well it's nice to meet some of these people for the first time you know and you're um, leaving yeah but <laughs> um we'll continue from next week sharon i see you smiling <laughs> <laughs> okay jerry okay yeah yeah take care Bye, Jerry. Take care. Bye, Take care. Guys. So the lamb, humble, pure, unblemished lamb of God. I, I tell you, God's word. And then in verses thirty to thirty-one, John tells the people that this is the one who comes after him and was before him. So John knows that Jesus. Well, before him, and comes now is coming after he was born. Um, in verses, to, uh, Beatrice, would you read Matthew chapter three, verse sixteen and seventeen for us? Okay, Matthew chapter three, verse sixteen and seventeen. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending. like a dove and lighting upon him and lo a voice from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom i'm well pleased 
I mean, how can we, the word, and the God himself, the voice of the Lord himself is saying, this is my beloved son. Nowhere else in the Bible is, this, is that recorded for, about anybody else but Jesus. This is my beloved son. How can some people doubt? I hope none of you doubt that this Jesus we're talking about is the son, the one and only son. This is in verse 34. This is the son of God. No doubt that John was an eyewitness of this. The dove coming down and sitting, sitting on the shoulder and the voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm, I'm, I'm well pleased. In verse 35 to 36, John lets the people recognize Jesus as the Lamb of God. I, I, this man, John, he doesn't take any glory for himself, but he gives all the glory to Jesus. And he points all the people to Jesus. And, and when we go of when you it's about Jesus, it's not about the preacher, it's not about the choir, it's not about the elders or the deacons. It's about Jesus, right, Madre? Yes, sir. It's about Jesus. Point people to Jesus. Lead people to Jesus. This is the Son of God. And then in, we see this becomes very interesting. Well, it's all interesting. In verse 37 and 39, two of John's disciples start following Jesus. Put yourself in that situation. You're walking down and these two men following you. But you have a, when somebody is close enough to you, even if they be, you have a sense of their presence, don't you? And yes. So he turned around and he saw them. And he asked them, What do you want? What do you want? And what did they tell him? He said, Well, Rabbi, where are you staying? And what did he, his response was, Come and I love this sentence. Come, Come and, and see. see. Come, Come and you will see. Yeah. Now, now listen to this. They didn't say, well, can we come tomorrow? <laughs> or can we come later? I have to go and take care of some other business. I have a conference call. I need to get on. <laughs> oh, I have this assignment. Can I go home and take a shower first? Will it change my clothes? No. They followed him. What an example. They followed him. Jesus is talking to you and me. Come and see. Come and see. That's the invitation. We, and we know we're either going to accept it or make an excuse or not do. But come and see. Oh my goodness. What a, What's the, that invitation? Come and see. So... <laughs> They obeyed without hesitation. When we follow Jesus, people, we see things clearly. When we follow Jesus, his way, we see things clearly. In verses 40 to 41, look at what happened. Andrew was one of these two. We, we don't know who the other guy was. I, I looked in the Bible um, who the other Disciple of John was, we don't know for sure. It doesn't, it's not clear anyway. If somebody find out, let me know. But in verse 40 to 41, Andrew was one of the two. Look at what Andrew does. The first thing Andrew did was to tell his brother Simon that they had found the Messiah. The first thing he did, he went to his brother Simon and told him, we have found the Messiah. You see, when you hear about something good, when you see, read a good book, or you go to a nice restaurant, what do you do? You share it with your friends and family, right? Think about the woman at the well. What did she do? She ran into the village and told them, I found the Messiah. The shepherds, when they finished visiting Jesus, they didn't go back to their sheep, they went into the village and shared the good news. And that's what we are called to do also, to share the good news, to tell others, even if it's one person, about Jesus, about Jesus. Now look, look at what Andrew found Jesus and went to Simon. 
Simon, later on, we will learn, became Peter, the rock. Jesus said, your name is Cephas, but I'll call you Peter, the rock, on who I will build my church. I, think about if Andrew did not go and bring his brother. But God's will be done. God put it in his heart, and he obeyed, and he went and brought Peter. And Peter became one of the leaders of the leaders of the early church. Verse 43 to 44, we get we meet Philip. And Jesus said, Follow me. Uh, Philip, I learned it also means lover of horses. He must have been a horseman. So now we, we learn that Peter, Andrew, and Philip were all from the same town, Bethsaida. And and those of us who, you know, I know Sharon and I and Beatrice, we spend a lot of time in Santa Flora. And when you come from a small town, everybody know everybody. Like, like I, I grew up in Quarry Village and we have friends when we meet, we say Quarry Boys. I, we, I, we post a picture recently on Facebook. I don't know how many of you saw it and the type, subtitle was Quarry Boys. You know, we know one another. We know one another. We have fellowship with one another. And then look what Pete, look what Philip does now in verse 45 to 46. He goes and tells Nathaniel about Jesus. Nathaniel seemed to be a, a skeptic, and the word tell uh, the Israelite without guile, <laughs> you know, he asks, Nazareth, can anything good come from there? And then Philip, people, come and see. I love that. Come and see. Come, let me tell you about Jesus. Come, let me show you Jesus. And then in verse 47 to 49, Jesus greets Nathaniel as an Israelite in whom there is nothing false. You see, Nathaniel is one of those type of people who wanted to get all the facts first. Dot every I, cross every T before he make the next step. But when Jesus explained to him, he bowed down and acknowledged Jesus as the Son of God. As the Son of God. And in verse 50, Jesus tells them that they shall see greater things Donna Francis, would you read 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12 for us? Okay, first, first Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. You see, getting to know everything about Jesus is like school time. We start in ABC, and they teach us A, B, C, D, one and one make two. That's what we can handle at that time, right? They don't teach us calculus in grade school. It's on, so similarly, it's a process. Salvation is an event. Sanctification is a process. And we con it's a growth process. We're continually growing in Christ by studying the word. Now we see in part. We'll be patient. We will see clearly as we continue to grow in Christ. In verse 51, Jesus tell them and, and give them and an, an us an insight of the second coming. Uh, Madri. Matthew 16, 27, please. For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. Those who do good will receive a good reward. Those who do evil will receive the judgment that they deserve. May we be ones who will do good works. But on by the grace of God, by by His power. Uh, Beatrice, would you read Acts chapter one, verse eleven for us? Acts chapter one, verse eleven, which also said, "Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner." as ye have seen him go into heaven. So when he came first on that first Christmas day, he came as a baby. 
humble in a manger, only expo known to the three wise men and the, and the shepherds. But people, the second coming, totally different. The word tells us that he will come, the second, just as he went up, coming down from heaven in his glory, in his majesty, bright light, shining. And we know that every knee shall bow. Every knee. Because everybody going to see him and bow and proclaim him Lord. Those of us who believe him and accept him, it will be a joyful time. Those of us who don't believe him, it will be a sad and fearful, scary time. I pray for you and me that it will be, a, if we're still alive, yeah, in that time, it will be a time of rejoicing and a time of hallelujah. He's here. My God is here. You know, like, like Christmas time, when we had our family come visit and you see them walking through the door, how, that, how did you feel about that? And you hug them and say, welcome, make yourself at home kind of deal. It's going to be a hundred million times better than that, that feeling. So that brings us to the end of chapter one. How was this for you tonight? What did you, what was one thing you got out of this that you say, wow? Nothing? <laughs> one thing, give us, share one thing that you got out of our study tonight that kind of wowed you. And you can't wait to try. Oh. Come follow me. As it, as it previously said, take up thy cross and follow me. So I want to start to follow him um, closer. Yeah, Amen. that's what jumped out at me. Yep. And Maybe, and the, the second part of that, like just piggybacking off what she said is, don't wait. When he says come follow you, just come. Yep. Don't don't wait no, another day, no, another yeah. moment. The time is now to just do it. So tomorrow is not guaranteed. Yeah. Come follow me. Anybody else got anything out of our study tonight? The preparation for the second coming, just to be prepared at all times. Be prepared. Yep. Yep. At all times. We don't know. No one knows. Yeah. Anybody else have anything they'd like to share with us? The importance of the baptism. The baptism, yeah. And I really pray that if you have not been baptized as an adult, go get it done. Get number 14, done. Death. Huh? Number 14, death. 14. 14. The word becomes flesh and mad is dwelling among us. Uh, yeah. He became. Nobody invited Jesus to come, you know. He came out of his love for us. And, and he recognized our need for him. And he came. Anybody else of anything? The light of knowledge shining in your heart. Oh, thank you, Madri. Yeah. You want light? You want to know what's the truth? Here it is in the word. Thank you. You got anything, Sharon? Yes, but he said, you cannot see my face for no one can see me. And live. So the day we see his face, we'll be in heaven. In heaven. Yep. In heaven with eternal life. Yep. Yep. So some of the main points in the review, Jesus is the word. Every word. Old and New Testament. Every single word. He is the word. And then he is ever present with us. John the Baptist was the messenger. Prepare ye the way. And he did a really good job. He lost, he, he was killed because of the, the good job he was doing. But he's also telling us, prepare for the second coming also. And Jesus will baptize us with fire and the Holy Spirit. Now, this fire is not a fire that consumes us and burns us, it's a cleansing fire, a cleansing fire and the Holy Spirit. And when we follow Jesus, we see things clearly. And if we want to see him, we must come to him. 
We want to see him. We must come to him. Marjorie, would you close us in prayer, please? Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, for having brought us together mm. for the first of the new year. And we ask you, Lord, that as we leave here, we will remember your word. We will remember the strength of your word. Mm. The word will become new and real to us. Oh. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you for Lincoln, who is dedicated to your word and who is dedicated to spreading your word. Lord, until next week, we ask that you watch between us all. Yes, Lord. And help us to continue to serve and spread your word in whatever way we can. Mm. So, Son, our Lord. Amen. 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 So next week, I'm nobody volunteering.